What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, you already know we back with story time, okay? Y'all, as y'all can see from the title below, this is a time when somebody else wreck my first car i know everybody wrecked their first car that's why you're supposed to get like a little cash car a little beat up run down car whatever but bitch i ain't even get a chance to wreck my own car oh yeah if y'all seen any of my other story times and they wasn't ghetto <laughs> this might be the one for you okay because the little situation we got into child we're gonna get right up into the story y'all already know the vibes go ahead and sit back relax Grab your snacks and tune in for the tea. Hey, don't get fucked by none of that shit. By none of that shit. Don't get fucked by none of that shit. Okay, so I realized that everybody haven't seen all of my videos in order and I probably be confusing people when I just start like calling off names and people be like, who is that? Who is that? Like, who is this? If you new here, I just recommend y'all go ahead and go back and if you wanna watch my videos in order to get kind of like a background on certain people. If y'all have already seen my best friend and her boyfriend scam me, this story time is taking place after that happened. So of course at this time, I'm still living with Dre. I had already known this girl. We're gonna call her Shay. So I had already known Shay. We were cool for like months. You know, we would just talk at work. We didn't really hang out outside of work. We barely text outside of work. At this point, she was a work friend. I guess you could say we were like building a friendship because you know, she would tell me about her home life and I would tell her about mine. And basically we kind of bonded. I don't want to say trauma bonded. <laughs> But damn near, we weren't like happy with our home life at the time. And we were both out living with our boyfriends. Not, it's not like the best kind of bonding, but it was bonding in a sense because we were basically in the same situation. Mind you, Dre worked at Walmart too at one point, but he had been quit at this point. That's a whole nother story time. Oh my God. But he knew Shay, so they were cool too. Y'all seen any other of my story times in certain videos I mentioned that I don't like Gray's brother, which we call him Devante. Also, Dum Dum is Devante's baby mama. Dum Dum is who I befriend later on down the line. At this point in time, we are not friends. I know of her, but we're not friends. This is still pretty much in the beginning of Dre and I's relationship. So me and his brother are cool at this point. We did start off cool, but that, that quickly came to an end, let me tell you. Oops. That's for another time. So like I mentioned, me and Shay were building this friendship, right? So now she wants to start hanging out outside of work. Me, if I'm cool with somebody at work, I usually try to like keep the relationship a work relationship. But if I'm vibing with you a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? I'll hang out with you outside of work. If I, if I feel like we like vibe, we cool, we click and we connect. So I was like, yeah, girl, we can hang out. I started going over her boyfriend's house because that was basically like her home. But I didn't really like going over there too much because like he was, I don't know, he was weird about her. He was kind of like too overprotective. I don't know if he was insecure or what, but listen. Also, I ended up seeing him years later at Mike's Seafood and he tried to ask for my number. Just trifling. Let me shift it back to Dre and Devante real quick because I have to explain this. So. His brother will always, always ask me like, where your friends at? Bring your friends around. I want to talk to somebody, like bring somebody around for me. Mind you, I don't know the relationship between him and his baby mama. I've seen her before. We've even had like an altercation before because the very, very first time I ever went to Dre's house, we were supposed to like go bowling or something or like, I don't know, go to a hookah bar. It was one of the two, I can't really remember. So we were supposed to do something that night. Dre's brother, Devante, is still in that type of time. He's telling everybody, Oh, my baby mama crazy, dum dum, dum dum is his baby mama. He telling everybody she crazy, they not together, she won't leave him alone, she damn near stalking him, right? Okay. He's begging me to bring girls over all the time. So I invite my best friend Bree to go with us. So we both get there, the garage open. We go in through the garage. Your garage door brings you to the kitchen in most houses. So we in the kitchen, whatever. We can't see nothing but the kitchen. If you look straight ahead, you can see the living room, but you can't, but there's this like wall and it's blocking the space. So we up in there, we laughing and chilling. I mean, for like a good, 10, 15 minutes, we just talking, whatever. Dre telling me he got pizza on the way, we drinking, they got a bottle or whatever. Mind you, Devante nowhere to be seen. <laughs> we like to go up in the living room to sit on the couch and chill and with and just keep talking or whatever. So we start walking and we hit that corner. It's somebody sitting on the staircase. 
And I'm just like, who the hell is this? Cause mind you, this is my first time going to Dre house. I have never seen this girl. I've only heard about her. I've only heard she's crazy. It's dumb dumb. Sitting on the staircase. What the hell? <laughs> Boy, you telling me to bring a friend for you and you got your baby mama up in here and we all finna leave? What's she finna do? Cause she not coming. She is not invited. Y'all, when I tell y'all, it's so awkward. It's so awkward because we look like we finna step out. Like we don't have on club clothes. We look real cute. My friend Bree got on booty shorts and a crop top. Obviously she not for Dre. And we just see Dum Dum like side eyeing us, mugging us. From there, I just knew it was gonna be a problem. After about like five minutes of awkwardness sitting in her presence, she go upstairs where Devante at. And you could just hear arguing. Me and my friend Bree just like on the couch laughing and shit. What is going on? At this time, Dre, he was trying to like warn me, but he was doing it on a slick. Like he wasn't saying what the fuck he should have been saying. He was just like, don't feed into that. You don't really gotta bring nobody around. Just say you don't know nobody. And stuff like that. If this man would have told me that Devante and Dum Dum was actually together, he just didn't want to claim her. I wouldn't have brought nobody around because that's disrespectful. Devontae make it seem like she's a certified psycho. He's just steady trying to spin this story and I don't even know that it's just the story that he just spinning. So Dum Dum and Devante start getting into it. He like, man, take your ass home. You crazy, why are you here? Told you I wasn't even gonna be here tonight. We all caught up into the car and we skirt off on her ass. Why she get into her car, start chasing us, start following us. Every turn we made, she was on this nigga bumper. Like at the time that it was the craziest fucking thing. I had never seen a girl act like that over a nigga that I thought didn't want her. Still consistently asking me to bring people over for him. So Shay come over. I feel like I should mention that she had broken up with her boyfriend at this time. She had moved like around the corner actually from Dre's house back with her mom. And I know you're like, what the hell did all this gotta do with somebody crashing your car? But y'all, I have to tell the events in order. It's all gonna come around. It's all gonna make sense, okay? Just bear with me, bear with me, okay? So one weekend, Shay comes to Dre house, you know, we all chilling, whatever. I think we, I think we go up the street to like get some alcohol or something. And we come back, we not even gone for that long. We gone for maybe like 15, 20 minutes tops. We pull back up and guess who in the driveway? Dum Dum's dumb ass. We get out like she, and she instantly starts going off on Devontae like, who the fuck is that bitch? Who is that bitch in the car? Why the fuck is she there? So that's what we doing now? So this what the fuck we doing? Devontae's just like, man, move around. You know what it is. You already know it is. We ain't together, blah, blah, blah. Like at this point, them fighting is nothing new. They always going back and forth. It's mostly about a female. Like, okay, like at this point, this is normal. This, this behavior is normal. She had been drinking, she was noticeably drunk. And this is one thing that I did not like. I did not like when me and him was cool and me and her was not cool. He would always try to bring me into their arguments, like for me to like take his side. And mind you, I don't even know their dynamic for real at this point. Like looking back, he was wrong. At this time, you know, I'm minding my business. I'm talking to Shay. I had clothes and Dre trunk. So I'm like getting some clothes out the trunk and I'm about to take him in the house. And he stops me, mid argument with them. He stops me from walking and he starts putting me into their argument, asking me questions like, am I wrong? Am I wrong? I, I'm not wrong. Why is she here? I don't even understand why she here. No, answer the question, answer the question. Am I wrong? I'm like, listen, I'm not trying to be a part of that. And this bitch cut me off mid sentence talk about, who gives a fuck what she think? No, like, this don't got shit to do. Ain't nobody give a fuck what she think. And I'm like, bitch, you the one crazy. You the one stalking this nigga. Like, I'm just going off of what he said. Because like I said, let me reiterate that for another time. I don't know the, the real dynamic of their relationship. But I'm, a, I'm just over here calling her a stalker. Bitch, fuck you. Like, we started going at it. And we started going at it hard. So she was like, bitch, walk around the car. Walk around this fucking car. I swear to God, I swear to God. We can go around the corner. We can go around the corner and fight. And I was like, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Mind you, Devontae holding her back. Shay just trying to pull my arm like, like girl, stop, stop arguing. You yelling outside, it's late as hell. She not worth it. Y'all gonna like wake the neighborhood up, basically. So I go in the house, I change clothes, take my earrings out, uh, tie up my hair. This all took me like a minute, like literally. I'm like, I'm running in the house, <laughs> throwing off all my clothes, bitch. I moved so fast, I felt like super bitch doing all this shit. I come back outside, her and Devontae like down the street at this point. 
So I guess he was like trying to calm her down. So he took her down the street. But she come back and she back on it, banging on her car. Let's go around the corner. Let's go around the corner. Blah blah blah. Monte telling him, man, y'all just go inside. Y'all just go inside. And he was like, no, make that bitch leave. Talking about Shay. Make that bitch leave. Why the fuck is she here? So Shay goes home. I'm coming back up. I'm walking back through the garage. Now at this point, she's sitting in the garage. She on the phone with her mama crying. But mind you, as I'm getting out the car before I actually walk up, I'm hearing her like, I'm taking my time because I'm trying to listen to what she's saying and who she actually talked to. And if she's talking shit, cause bitch, we could get it right here. Ain't nobody outside to hold us back. I'm pretending like I'm looking for something. I'm pretending like I'm on my phone standing outside the car. And she was just like, mama, mama, I pulled up and this girl was here and we got into it. I got into it with Dre girlfriend. Why is you on the phone crying to your mama? Go home and cry to your mama. You still in his man garage. Please, why is you here at this point? So I'm just texting Shay all night and we just talking about it, talking shit or whatever. And Dre, Dre is actually mad at me. Like I'm the one who started it. Like for a few days, there's tension with me and Dre because he telling me, man, stop bringing girls over here. Like you can't believe everything Devontae tell you. Don't even get sucked into that situation. And I'm like, this man is always asking me to bring a friend for him. Like, I'm not offering to bring bitches around here. I'm not offering that. I want to add that me and Bree knew Devontae from like middle school, like way back in the day. I didn't talk to him as much as Bree talked to him, but I still have this like kind of perception of him that, of the person that I thought he was. And actually being around him, being older like i don't want to get too deep into it but he was not like anything like how i remembered how i recalled or how i thought because i don't know what i thought but he wasn't who i thought he was really i'm just thinking he just like this cool ass nigga and this girl is really crazy but later on i will definitely find out different. don't get me wrong because this girl definitely has stalker tendencies just in this case he was manipulating her because he was telling her one thing but telling everyone else that he did not want to be with her and that she was crazy so basically me and dre's into it it's just tension dynamics are shifting like it's causing a rift between us so we get into it and we get to arguing about other stuff. You know, when you start arguing like every situation that pissed you off, that comes out. So the situation with Dum Dum and Devontae came up and we get into it hard because he was trying to blame me for that. And that had absolutely like, that was not my fault. It's not my fault that this bitch crazy and pulled up. It's not my fault that your brother always asking me to bring bitches around because he's single. He's portraying to be a single man. Get down arguing. To me, the argument went too far. I'm like, I ain't never experienced no shit like this. Like, this is ridiculous. This is too much drama. Every time Dum Dum came around, caught Devontae doing whatever, it was always really intense. I'm talking the police getting called. It was a lot. So I'm like, I'm done with this shit. Like, I packed my little bag, child. And I ended up asking Shay if I could stay with her for a few days. And she was like, yeah. Actually, she was kind of hesitant. But she was like, yeah, yeah, come on, you can come. I get over there and it is... It's giving Motel 6 hole in the wall. It That's what her home was giving. It's giving when Nene walked out the car, she was like, ooh, the ghetto. Ooh, ah, the ghetto. The ghetto. The ghetto. And the bitch, I got out of the car like, ooh, okay. Then I got up into the house and it was, it was a little bit worse. I should not get up in your house to see a cockroach awaiting your arrival home. I was like, ooh, girl, it really took me back because that's not the first thing I expected to see. It's daytime. Let me go hibernate in the daytime? No, these cockroaches is active over here. Are you sure your mama's gonna be okay with this? And she she was like hesitant. She was like, yeah, yeah, she, she won't care, whatever. She wasn't confident in her response. So I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be a problem. But she tells me to hide my bags in her closet. And I was like, yeah, her mom not gonna fuck with this. To the fact that we worked overnight and her mom like worked in the morning time when we would be getting off. Like her mom really wouldn't have known that I was over there. Like she wouldn't have known that I was living there. It's, it's like two days at this point. Shay had quit working at Walmart. I, don't, I forgot why she quit, but she quit. I guess she couldn't take it no more. And now she's looking for another job, whatever. She's going on interviews. So on this one particular day, mind you, I get off at 6 a.m. This one particular day, I had to get off at 7 a.m. Shay had her interview at like 9 a.m. 
Her mom was already gonna be gone for work, so her mom couldn't take her to the interview. 6.57, this bitch texts me in the morning. It's early as hell. And she asked me, can I take her to an interview when I get off of work? I'm thinking to myself, girl, I'm gonna be tired as hell. That mean I can't go to sleep at all. But I'm like, she is letting me live with her, so let me like go ahead and take her to this interview. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take you with So I get off work, make it to her house at around like 7.30. And she's getting ready for her interview and everything. And I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and take this time. Get a few minutes to sleep because I'm exhausted. Working overnight exhausts you. She wakes me up like when she ready to go. So I'm like, I'll come with you because like it is my car. I was real hesitant about letting this girl drive. This was the worst mistake I could have ever made. Do not let anybody drive your car. But I was so exhausted this day and I had already told her I would. I couldn't go back on that. So I'm like, I'll ride with you. Um, and you can drive. These days, if it's not someone I trust completely, like I cannot fall asleep with you driving in a car. Now, what am I answer nobody like that? I'm not falling asleep with you in the car while you driving. At this time in my life, I was like, fuck everything, like bitch, uh, YOLO, okay? I actually fell asleep in the car with this girl. So every now and then I get jerked or something wakes me up and I'm like, girl, what's going on? You okay? And she was like, like, yeah, these people just don't know how to drive. I'm trying to get there. I'm not trying to be late. Like, and I even said, okay, girl, we'll slow down. Like, I'm not trying to get into no accident. I don't have insurance. And I know I should have had insurance, but y'all, I was trying to cut corners and cut back on what I thought was bullshit so I could like spend my money on what the what my priorities was on, like which was the actual bullshit. Don't be like me, don't do that. Prioritize, pay your damn bills, especially your car insurance. Car insurance would have helped a lot in this situation. So she jerks me out my sleep like one more time and I tell her again like, girl, slow down. Just like, if you late, you late. Like this is like a bullshit ass job that you probably not even gonna get because to be honest, she was not qualified for the job. She told me that she wasn't qualified for this job, but she still wanted to go just to show her mom that she was like taking the initiative to find and get a job. So I don't even know why she was trying to like rush like this. So somehow I fall back to sleep anyway. Y'all. The next time I awake, it's to a fucking big ass boom. The car got hit on my side. So I'm like, what just happened? What the fuck just happened? And she was like, oh my God, this man just hit me. I was trying to turn, I was trying to switch lanes and he saw me trying to switch lanes, but he got over anyway and he just hit the fucking car. And Shay, I fucking told you to drive correctly because I don't even have insurance. So I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do? I don't have insurance. My aunt gonna kill me because the car, because the car was in both of our names. And I was lying to her, apparently telling her that I had insurance and I didn't. Yeah. And he's like trying to like signal to her to pull over. She was like, oh my God, what should I do? Tell me what to do, I don't know what to do. He was trying to make us go right. I'm like, bitch, go straight. We are not following him, drive. So she skirts off, start driving straight. He notices immediately. He started following us. Oh my God, he's following us, he actually following us. I'm like, bitch, keep driving. We are not pulling over for nothing. You better get away. <laughs> Y'all, I was dead ass serious. I was not, first of all, I thought they was gonna take my car because I didn't have insurance. I thought I was gonna go to jail for fleeing the scene. Right hand lane where the truck is and we're in this lane. So the truck is now right here following us and we're in this lane and then the other two are like left lanes or whatever that can turn left. So the truck is in this lane and we're trying to get away. The truck zooms in front of us and dead ass parks this truck in the middle of the street so we cannot move. So there's traffic building up behind us. I'm surprised we didn't get hit from the back. So we can't go backwards. We can't go to the side. We can't go nowhere. Like we can't go to this side because there's cars. We, we're stuck. The man like opens his door and tells us to follow him. Like we don't have another choice. Because he got my license plate number, he said he'll call the police. We follow him to the first gas station that we see and we park at the gas station. We park at a pump. He parks like where you go to like put air in your tires. And he was just like trying to give a whole speech and we were just like, we were scared and da 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 da. I'm pissed, but I put on like the nice voice for him because essentially like he has all the control right now. I go back to the car with this girl. My fear starts to turn to like anger at this point towards her because I told her three times to drive carefully and she did not listen. You still driving how the fuck you wanna drive, bitch. I trusted you with my car while like, 
y'all, I was so pissed. So I, I get out the car. I call Dre and I start going off. I'm going off. I'm like, Dre, this bitch just wrecked my car. I'm giving him the whole rundown of everything. I'm telling him how I told her to drive carefully. I don't know how many times. I'm telling her, like, she was not even finna be late to this interview. Like, girl. Like, what was the reason? That what was the I reason? Just explained. I just what was the reason? <laughs> For you to be zooming in and out of lanes like that. And I told her to stop. She stopped, and I guess when I fell back asleep, she started doing it again. She got out the car, and here I'm talking shit, I guess. She get out, and she crying, and she was like, I said I was sorry, I said I didn't mean to, da, da, da. You not finna be held accountable for this. I'm finna be held accountable. Top of that, I don't have no insurance. I told you multiple times, da, 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 da. So I'm like, fuck you. I, I was fed up. I don't know if I was cranky, sleep deprived, exhausted. Matter of fact, I was literally all of that. So it was unnecessary, it could have been avoided. This interview was not that deep. So I'm on the phone with Dre. I, he listening to me just argue and go back and forth with her. And he's just telling me like to walk away from her. Don't cause no scene, especially if the man who car we hit, especially if he say he gonna call the police. I go inside of the gas station and I'm still on the phone with Dre. I'm still talking shit. So I'm trying to finish up telling him what had just happened. I'm livid, I'm livid. And the owner of the gas station, he was like, you need to get out, you need to get out of here. You can't be, you're too loud. You cannot be using that kind of language up in here. And da, 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 da. I saw red at this point. Like all this anger I had built up in me, it just came out. I'm on the phone, this don't have shit to do with you. Fuck you, I don't want nothing out this funky ass store anyway. And he was like, well get out, get out of my store. And you cannot come back, you're not allowed to come back. And I'm like, fuck this store. So I pick up the ice. Like it was this big chunk of ice, like where they keep the beer and stuff. I pick up the ice and I throw it, I throw it at him. But they have that like bulletproof thing right there. It didn't go on him, it just like hit the bulletproof thing. Like I'm embarrassed about this, like I shouldn't have done that. I was, I don't know what caused me to get that man. I think I was just like taking too much from people and he just so happened to get it. Wait, cause I threw the ice at him and he was like, I'm calling the police, I'm calling the police on you. And I was like, bitch, they already on the way. Because the other man had called the police about the accident. So I don't know what the hell was wrong with me because that's definitely like some sort of assault, I, I think. I don't know, I don't know. You know they'll have any reason to take a nigga to jail, so. Uh, the police took so long to come. What I'm telling you, we was waiting for, I don't know how long for the police to come. Like this was not an issue to them. They took their sweet ass time. So the police come and I guess the man points him out to our car. He tell us to pull in front of the man. He talks to the man for about 10 minutes and then and then the man ends up leaving and then he comes over, talks to us. He, when I tell y'all, this man didn't ask for no insurance or nothing. He didn't ask for none of that. Like, I'm surprised we didn't even at least get a ticket for trying to run. He just took our statement and made us sign something, but it wasn't a ticket. I don't remember what we had to sign, but I'm for sure that it was not a ticket or like a, any kind of notice to appear in court or anything like that. I feel like he just like knew we were young and he knew we didn't have nothing because bitch, I don't, I'm not gonna pay no ticket. It. So please don't give me one. I'm not trying to accumulate this kind of debt. And yeah, I don't want to go to jail for not paying a damn ticket. So we're thinking we're getting off scot-free. Like we're thinking nothing is going to come of this. So yeah, he's like, basically do not let her drive your car ever again. And da da da. I hop in the driver's seat. I immediately take her home. When we get to her house, she go up in her house. I stay in the car for a little bit. And I'm talking to Dre. And I'm just like asking him if I could come back over there. <laughs> Of course he was like, yeah. So I go up in there and I pack my little things. I get my things together. And while I'm packing my stuff in her closet, looking for my stuff, she just come up in there and she was like, why are you packing your stuff and leaving? I was like, girl, I need some space from like, I don't want to be around you right now. I need some space. So I'm going back to Dre house. And she was like, well, I just want you to know that I'm really sorry. Like I didn't mean for none of that to happen. I'm just like, I understand that. And I accept your apology. But at the same time, I told you multiple times and you ignored me like you did it for a minute. And when you felt like I was back to sleep, you started driving how the fuck you wanted to. You don't drive your mama car like that. You say you quote unquote drive her car. I feel like when you when you behind the wheel of somebody else's vehicle, you need to be more cautious than you would in your own vehicle. And that's exactly why I don't like driving other people's cars. I wasn't gonna mess with her for a while. Like I, I needed space from her because no. We were still building a friendship and then you do this shit like girl. Like, I understand, and thank you for letting me stay at your house, but come on now. This is finna cost. And I go to Dre house, I show him the damage. Him and Devontae come out, and they just like, dang, she fucked your car up, da-da-da-da. So weeks are going by, 
and I still haven't told my aunt about this accident, obviously they gonna send something in the mail. So one day she calls me. Somehow I just already knew what it was gonna be about. She calls me and she was like, you were in a car accident? And my damn heart dropped. So I had to finally explain and tell her what had happened. I did not want to tell her that I let somebody else drive the car because she told me a hundred times not to let nobody drive the car. That's why I can't even fully blame Shay because my dumb ass is the one who let her drive my vehicle when I was specifically told not to let nobody drive it. Turns out that $5,000 was due for damages. And I'm like, this man car wasn't even damaged. My car got damaged worse than his. It looked like all his car had was like a, a fender bent in or whatever. And you could have like went up under there and popped that out. And he probably just needed to like get a little paint job right there. My damages were far worse than his and that was definitely not $5,000 worth of damage. Whenever she seen that, I, I finally had to fess up and tell her that I didn't have car insurance. Of course, she was livid. She was mad as hell because how is this gonna get paid? Time is going by and we keep getting stuff in the mail that it needs to be paid and we need to call and set up a payment plan. Then Shay starts getting calls and she reaches out to me and she was like, do you get this in the mail? They said they gonna sue us if we don't take action. I don't have no money. My mom don't have no money either. So I don't, I can't pay for this. Y'all. Ain't nothing pissed me off more because it's not like she even was like, okay, well, I'm gonna try to find a job and work and find a way to help you pay for it because I was thinking we could split it down the middle because essentially it is both of our faults. Like it's my fault for letting you drive my car and me not having car insurance and it's your fault for driving like a fucking maniac. This bitch just flat out told me like, I can't pay for this and my mama can't pay for this either. And I'm just like, wow, this is how people will really do you. Like, I, I had cut her off. I was gonna give her another chance eventually. Like, I just needed some time. But after that, oh no, you, mm-mm. I was like, no, hell no. Much, much, much later. The man whose car we hit is taking legal action towards suing us. Like, we're actually about to get sued in this bitch. And my aunt is gonna get sued too because the car is in both of our names. She was pissed the hell off. She was so upset that she that we went down. She took her name off of like all the information so that the car could just be in my name. Of course, we were still both getting sued because at the time it was in her name, but she didn't want shit else to do with me and that car. So she just put the car in my name. If you cannot fix my shit, if something happens while you behind the wheel, then no, you cannot drive my car. Oh, I'm so sorry about it. Getting these letters and stuff for like a year. And then at the end of it, like when he decided that he was gonna take legal action and actually sue both of us all three of us that's when my aunt she came out of her pocket and paid the full five thousand dollars didn't even ask shay or her mama to reimburse her i, I honestly don't know what i would have did without her because i i done been in some, some situations and she has come through in them for me I think she told me after that she had went ahead and paid it and y'all, I couldn't have been more thankful. From like, then on, I had my car insurance, honey. Car insurance was on deck. That really taught me a lesson, like, no. So after that, I really did not mess with Shay at all like that. Communications like faded, you know what I'm saying? We stopped talking to each other. Like I, I definitely was not reaching out and she wasn't either because if she was really ducking and dodging this little situation. About a year later, she got in communications with me again. Like she had made a new Instagram and added me on Instagram and she like DM'd me or whatever and started talking to me. We had actually like hung out and she was trying to like laugh about the situation. She was like telling it to her friend or whatever and she was laughing about it. And I'm it's just like, it's still too soon, bitch. Because my people short $5,000. Now I can find the humor in it. Then, no, it was definitely too soon because you got off 100% scot free. So yeah, I ain't never messed with her again. Like we, she's like DM me and stuff since then because this was a very long time ago. We're not, we're not friends, we're not acquaintances. We're just what? <laughs> we just follow each other on social media. It is what it is, which is nothing. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I think I'm gonna have to cut a lot out because I think I went too deep into people's personal lives. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to leave a comment and hit that subscribe button. And I'm gonna see y'all in my next video. Bye.
Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. You ignorant. <laughs> My friend Brianna is goofy. Like she will laugh at anything. Like so, Brianna's just over there goofy laughing and shit. We drinking, so everything is extra funny. <laughs> you could have lied to your mama. The hell? Not saying I condone lying to your mama. A car accident or missing an interview? Which one would you pick? <laughs> Bitch, drive. He had a big truck, so 